All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started then. So good morning. Um, my name is Amy Young, and I am the Director of Business Development with Wagman Construction. And today we are going to talk about construction project delivery methods. Um, so choosing the right delivery method uh, for your construction project can reduce risks and improve the likelihood of attaining your cost, quality, and schedule goals. It gives you as the owner additional control over certain elements of the project and flexibility for potential changes along the way. So you're ready to start a building project. You might have an idea, maybe you have a budget, maybe you've even started to engage an architect and start with design, but how do you ensure the best value for your project? The construction delivery method can help to set the tone for the building process. There are more than three ways to procure construction services, but for today's conversation and um, from our experience, because we do a lot of work within senior living, these are the three primary ways that our senior clients that we work with uh, procure construction services. So we're gonna stick to these three methods today, but they are design bid build, which is often more commonly referred to as a lump sum hard bid, design build, and construction management at risk. And determining your project priorities will help um, you determine which project deli delivery method is right for you and your project. So let's examine these primary three a little bit closer. <clears throat> the first one we're gonna talk about is design bid build. So if a lump sum cost is your priority, you may want to evaluate the, the traditional design bid build or lump sum hard bid method. In this method, the general contractor provide, provides a lump sum bid after design is complete and you as the owner then choose the low cost provider. So the owner will hire an architect who completes design documents. And hopefully that design is 100% complete before, before it's put out to bid. Um, the project is put out to bid. Generally, my recommendation would be to three to five contractors. When you get more than five, um, it, it just really, can get to be a little too much. So I recommend three to five contractors. The general contractor then will begin the process of getting their bids from the subcontractors. And then based on low bid, the owner hires a contractor. <clears throat> so you're hiring based upon price, not upon qualifications. Um, the owner typically does not get to see the bids, and you may never know if you've overpaid for your project by the end of the project because it is not open book. So sequentially, it looks like this. Um, it's often seen as the low cost solution. Um, so the owner selects the architect, the architect and the engineers design the project. I mentioned hopefully to 100% completion, and then the um, project is put out to bid and the contractors bid the project. It's often seen as the low cost solution. Unfortunately, it does leave the contractor out of the design phase and can create gaps in constructability, which can lead to that dreaded word, change orders. And what I mean, um, by constructability. So the architects and the engineers design the project, they put it out to bid. You don't have a contractor involved in the design process. So uh, what could happen is the uh, plumbing design and the electrical design, they could put those lines in the same area. And unfortunately, the um, electrical line and the, the is running through the plumbing line when it's designed on paper. Um, so when you get out in the field and you go to build, 
that's going to result in a change order because one of the lines will need to be moved. Um, so that's what I mean by not having a contractor involved during design for constructability reviews. Furthermore, um, the contractor's costs are not auditable. So as I said, it's not open book. You don't really get a chance to review those subcontractor bids. Um, and it can create an adversarial relationship between the owner, the architects and engineers, and the contractor. Um, unfortunately, it can result in some finger pointing because when you have those lines clashing, you have to decide who's going to take responsibility for it. <clears throat> there are advantages, though. Um, the owner controls the architect. It's really a single point of contact during design, and it's a simple contractor sele selection process. You're not issuing a request for proposal, asking for proposals and reviewing it. You're simply hiring based on low price. Um, so it's more simple. It's straightforward. I would recommend that this is better for smaller projects, for uh, quick hitting renovations, maybe repair projects, not necessarily larger projects. The second procurement method, design build, um, that we're gonna talk about. Um, really, when you have a um, project budget and schedule that is tight and you wanna take the least amount of contractual risk, you might wanna consider the design build delivery method. In this method, the owner hires the general contractor and the general contractor hires both the architect and all the subcontractors. So there's less risk to you as the owner because you're only holding one contract. The architect and the contractor become a design build team working together through design. They build the complete scope of the project, allowing for a very streamlined and transparent process. So again, sequentially, it looks like this. Owner hires, owner has the concept, selects the design build contractor, design and pricing proceed. The, um, the bids are obtained from the subcontractors and suppliers and construction begins. This process, design build, does require open and effective communication and precise decision making. Um, I, I do recommend if you're going to use a design build procurement process that you have a, a really good idea as far as what your programming requirements are and what your budget is before you begin the process. Early collaboration leads to reduced change orders and shortened project schedules, which can add more value to you. The disadvantages of this um, procurement process is there's really no checks and balances um, because the contractor holds the contracts with the architect and the subcontractors. There's really no independent field inspections. So it does require, as I mentioned earlier, a well-defined budget and program requirements, and you need to have a high level of trust within the entire team. Um, it, it, it is a, a, a great uh, delivery method to use when um, your schedules are a little tighter um, because it does help speed up the entire process. The final <clears throat> delivery method that we're gonna talk about today is construction management at risk. And um, I'm, you'll hear, hear me refer to it as CM at risk. CM at risk allows for the selection based on qualifications, not just price. So you or your representative remain involved through design and construction. The construction manager holds the subcontracts, um, which often leads to better schedule and quality control. There's less work for the owner and less, I, sh I should say less risk for the owner. If a subcontractor fails halfway through the project, the construction manager is the one that is at risk and bears the burden of finding another subcontractor, hence the term CM at risk. 
The CM delivery method as allows you to select the architect, allows the owner to select the architect generally at the same time or maybe some uh, slightly before you hire the construction manager. And then you're hiring the construction manager based on the best value of price and qualifications. So you're assessing team members and their experience. This is traditionally done um, through issuing a request for proposal. Um, and in that request for proposal, you're gonna ask for project resumes, similar project experience, how they might um, approach pre-construction and construction services. Um, and then also you're generally asking for fees at that time as well. And then you're gonna make a determination based on best value. Um, in addition, you have the opportunity to negotiate those fees. There's a controlled bidding process uh, with the subcontractor. So the construction manager um, will generally only bid the project to subcontractors that they're accustomed to working for, ones that they have pre-qualified and know they, that those subcontractors can complete the project. They don't just open it up to any subcontractor to bid. In most scenarios, you can be given a guaranteed maximum price or GMP. And what that means is any cost overruns that are um, get paid by the construction manager, not you as the owner. So if you're an owner taking on a large project, that risk to reward ratio can look pretty appealing. The disadvantages of a CM at risk process. Um, you, you really need a construction manager that has strong pre-construction experience. Uh, because you're hiring them early and you're hiring them early to work with the architects and engineers through design, um, your understanding, your budget, and the uh, cost estimate that the whole way through design. And uh, so they, they need to have that pre-construction experience. You need an architect that is open to a collaborative process um, for the most part. Um, most architects are, and most of the architects uh, within the senior living world are accustomed to working in a CM at risk delivery process. Um, you also need to be sure that you quantify fees, reimbursables, and general requirements up front. And by we're often asked, what, what are general requirements? What does that mean? General requirements are things that the project needs that do not stay with the finished product. And it benefits all the contractors and subcontractors working on the project. So it's things like a job trailer, porta pots, dumpsters, things like that. Because those things are gonna go away after the building's built and the project is finished. So there are many relevant variables that play into your decision of what procurement process works best for you. Um, size of project, I mentioned if it's a smaller project uh, that, uh, or, or a repair project, maybe a lump sum hard bid just makes the most sense. Uh, time, how much time do you have? Design build can help save time. You may have board requirements that um, say you have to hard bid. If you do have board requirements that require a lump sum hard bid, even on larger projects, I would encourage you to potentially go back to your board and talk about if that makes the most sense, um, because it can be a less collaborative process. And even though you think you're getting the lowest price, because that contractor is not involved in pre-construction, it does often result in change orders. Your funding sources can dictate sometimes what delivery method you choose. If you have any federal funding, uh, for instance, we're working with a community right now that has USDA financing, that does require lump sum hard bidding, no matter the size of the project. 
So depending on your funding source, that could determine which project delivery method you are required to use. Experience. Your experience as an owner and the experience of the individual who you are putting in charge of leading the project could play a role into which project delivery method makes the most sense for you. How much transparency and collaboration you want, um, again, can play a role. Lump sum hard bid is less transparent, less collaborative um, than the other methods. And how much risk you're willing to assume. Obviously, the, the construction manager at risk um, process is less risk to you as the owner um, because you are um, not responsible for any failures of, of subcontractors. So, like I said, that was kind of a quick hitting high level uh, review. If you have any questions, please feel free. My contact information is on this slide. Um, I appreciate the time today and um, thank you so much, Sarah, for having me.